So I decided to try out a Font of Life Rakan build. Um, it's it's a build that uh, has been kind of popping around. I've seen I've seen a lot of high elo players go for it, and decided to give it a go myself. This is my Rakan build that I like playing right now. Redemption into Rod of Ages. I like Rod of Ages because it gives you the health for the Font of Life to make. Obviously, Font of Life is based on your percentage of your max HP plus your AP. So like Rod of Ages is a great uh, item for Font of Life users. So font of life and then i go into the zeke's convergence which is nice because it synergizes with your ultimate and then i actually like to go just for more full ap so i like to go for some sort of like full ap build paths into like rabadons and maybe that later down the line harmonic echoes font of life weakness loyalty and pack hunter now let's analyze the game but before that thanks to g2a for sponsoring the channel there's reference link in the description below and i can't do it quick enough to make it sound really stupid cool also comment if you want to join the giveaway for june see you soon Okay, we're in game doing a replay analysis of this Rakan game. I had, I had I'm look, I'm gonna be honest. This is a pretty insane Rakan game. Um, obviously got a nice little um initial hit onto the Galio. What I noticed is the Galio went for uh, his charge first, which is like his, his like his charge that goes in. You notice that he kind of went all in on the cannon like very early on in the laning phase. It seems like it's a relatively good way to kind of deal with ranged matchups as Galio. If you just go for your um your like righteous charge, whatever it's called. What the hell is that ability called? Does anyone know what that ability is called? Justice punch. Oh, that doesn't sound like right. Your justice punch first. If you can hit the, the ranged person, seems like a relatively good way to kind of deal with ranged matchups at level one. So anyway, they picked Alistair. I picked Rakan because they picked Zaya and I didn't want them to go Zaya Rakan. So I, I picked uh, Rakan for that reason. I got a nice double knock up here. Well, we didn't need to go all in on that. I was just looking for a little bit of an aggressive play. That was a... Obviously, we saw that the... Um, the I think that the um, Zaya actually hit level 2 super early on here. And unfortunately, I couldn't really get past the Alistair to help the Draven out. I wasn't expecting the Draven to go all in. I thought we could have turned and maybe peeled onto the... Uh, or peeled away from the, the, the Zaya because she burnt a lot of resources to make a play that didn't really work out for her. Nonetheless, though, not a great start for my Draven. I was just looking for a little cheeky knock-up. I wasn't expecting to have to go all in there. It is a very difficult matchup for a Rakan into an Alistair. Um, like, Alistair will just, like, use his Pulverize when you try and go in for the knock-up, and you can become very, very vulnerable. So you've got to be very careful playing this particular matchup. However, I have got a bit of a level advantage here, so I am trying to zone away the Zyre as much as possible. They've clearly got the wave pushing in for them, so they don't have to worry too much. This is why you can see them playing a little more defensive than usual. Now, Alistair has activated this, which tells me he doesn't have, he doesn't have Headbutt. He only has Pulverize, which he's just missed both of those abilities. So he should be able to be a little bit more aggressive in this situation. You can see that Draven now is able to pick up uh, a kill and i get the second one here now wukong has just shown himself so i've got to be a little careful you can see wukong's in the river um there's some back pings for me to go away but i have my 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 um dash so i can kind of just push this wave in i don't really want to leave the lane in its current position because if i leave the lane in its current position they can potentially freeze it so i have to push it to tower so i had to, i had to take that risk for the health of our lane realistically it also denies a couple of minions maybe away from zaya so she maybe loses one or two minions there which is great but also just stops her from freezing effectively. We didn't really want to see Zaya freeze that lane, so I had to take the risk to push the lane in because the way it was set is if Zaya came back to it and Alistair helped her freeze it, we were in a really, really rough spot. Picked up Redemption. I always like to have this as my first item in high elo uh, lobbies. I think it's important to have the Redemption early on as a support player. And I'm picking up some health to help my font of life, but also we're heading towards a Rod of Ages as our first item. So Rod of Ages will be the, uh, the the item that we're looking for. Now we don't want to fight because Draven is not level five. And I don't want to fight when Draven's not level five. Like the Zaya being level five makes her very difficult to lock down. Obviously the Alistair is a little bit of an easier target because he's not level five himself, but I'm not keen on fighting at this stage in the game. I just want to get some vision around for the Drake that's spawning um, and then you know, eventually try and use that as, a, as leverage. So uh, Alistair almost level five. You probably hear me talk about it a lot. Using this little experience meter here is really important. Now I've seen that my Fizz has been found out by Alistair on the Krogs. So that's why I was initially going to go gank mid. So I was initially going like, I'm going to go kill the Galio because the the Kennen got really low HP. I don't know if you can see, but the Kennen is, is on like super low HP. So that's why I roamed over to try and help the Galio. Kind of mistake, like mistook where he was going to go. I was trying to predict his dash and it didn't really work out. Didn't get punished for it too heavily, though. You can see Alistair roaming down here, so it would be a, be a really bad idea for me to walk through the blue side brush. So I'm going to hang around with my Fizz, try and not be, uh, try and not overextend too much, because we do have that dragon fight coming up. So we want to play really safe. We want to make sure that we're firing on all cylinders for that dragon fight, which 
as it stands not looking too hot right now because uh our, our Kali's on the other side of the map i'm trying to get some kind of like pressure here but we are we are obviously playing rakan we are not playing like a super tank managed to buy a bit of space uh for the um draven against the jacks here immediately i see an opportunity to maybe just like charm them up and i get a good charm off onto the zaya immediately have to flush out don't want to get knocked up by the galio here and uh, as far as i'm concerned my fight's pretty much over at this point but that charm uh, and the addition of the um and the addition of the akali the fight was really good and then i put a very offensive positioned uh, redemption which actually gets me the kill on the jacks and getting that kill on the jacks has actually given me a decent amount of gold i've now got 1800 gold so that's quite a lot of gold i can now use to go buy and that can buy some important parts of my rod of ages like the quicker the quicker i can get the rod of ages in this game the better it's going to be we're about 500 gold away from completing it so I think we played that pretty fight. Like I, I used my I used my quickness. I was like, damn, Zaya's overextended. I'm gonna go in and look for the look for the pull on her, and I did. Luckily, I actually caught the Wukong mid dash as well, which I was not expecting to do. That was not skill. That was complete luck in terms of timing on my uh, on my ultimate. We unfortunately are not in a good enough position to contest this Drake though, uh, or as it stands. I'm trying to see if there is like an angle for me to get in here, um, but unfortunately, like both Akali and Fizz, they're not really interested in this. So I just thought, well, I might as well try and I don't know what that ultimate was, by the way. I'm so sorry, you guys had to see that on your screens. Um, I was thinking maybe I can go and push mid lane tier one with the with the cannon, but cannon's kind of trolling. I'm not gonna lie. So there's a flash that comes in. I'm trying to keep the cannon safe, or at least safe enough. As you can see, I'm like in front of him, trying to body block as much as possible. Um, luckily, Fizz comes in, and I use my charm, my charm again to buy Fizz a bit of space here. Can't do enough, though, because I get locked up by the uh, Alistair, and I eventually have to just accept that I'm going to be running away from this engage. So I did my best to protect the cannon, did my best to protect the Fizz. We ended up getting a kill and trading two for two overall, because the... Um, uh, the Akali turned up and got the kill onto the uh, the Wukong. At the end of the day, though, you can see the Alistair gets protected by the Jax under tower. And we're like, okay, can't find it. Can't get the kill. Going to back off. But I've got enough of my Rod of Ages. So it's enough for me to back off and pick that item up. Picking up Rod of Ages as early as possible is a good thing. Because obviously it scales with time. So the more time you give it, the better. Now I can see over here, Draven's in the middle of a 2v1. Uh, and I'm like, okay. He's, he seems to be doing fine. <laughs> Draven seems to be doing fine. But I should probably go and help him versus this Galio, as you can see. Galio didn't quite find the engage. But I was like, okay, better go help the Draven. Maybe we can get top lane tier one out of, the top, out of this as well. Which is what I'm doing here. But with Alistair turning up, I think, okay, we're not going to get this. There's no point in me staying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wee all the way down to this part of the map. You can see Kennen over here played it really well. Managed to pick up the first power of the game. And I just see another opportunity to, you know, land a redemption, maybe look for an engage onto the Wukong. As you can see, Wukong decides that the best option for him is to go back into the fight, which forces out the flash from the cannon, which is fine. Um, try my best to keep cannon safe. But we, you know, at the end of the day, we've, we've bought enough time to get the Rift Herald for free. So we picked up another objective for free here. And again, I'm just mostly playing like babysitting my teammates, like using my, my grand entrance to babysit my teammates for the most part. I thought Galio was lower HP, I'm not going to lie, but uh, I thought it's okay to kind of bait this in. Uh, I, I was, I'm pretty tanky, I had all of my abilities available. I decided to try and go for the charm on Jax, because I think he'd be a relatively easy kill. Uh, unfortunately, he did pop his ultimate, so he had a lot of hate of resistances, so the Draven couldn't get the one shot on him. I think that was, that was a little bit awkward, I don't know, like, I, maybe that wasn't the play. Basically, maybe that wasn't playing. I, I decide that Akali's probably a lost cause here. Although, if you look at it, she was actually, she actually maybe could have got away. But I decided Akali was probably a lost lost cause and decided to abandon that team fight there. But we've got a little advantage right now. Like, we've got a pretty solid early advantage. Um, but I'm going to stick around because I want to defend this time. And watch this, guys. Watch this. This is just lovely. I, I know they're going to try and go for the kill on me, right? I know they're going to try and go for the kill on me. So I pop the redemption. I'm out of the Galio taunt. But they're still tempted to go for the engage. And watch this. I dash to Fizz flash comes through i dash back to fizz and we defend the tower and the wukong goes down to the draven ultimate i played that super nicely like redemption to buy my buy me some hp move out the galio taunt jump back to tower to keep myself as safe as possible and then dash to fizz with a shield dash back to fizz when he's uh when galio has flashed for me and i managed to keep myself safe that was actually i was honestly i was really proud of that little play and if you don't tell me that it was a good play it's gonna be sad because i was really proud of that little play and it's part of the reason why I love Rakan so much. He's got so much really awesome playmaking potential. So I really like Rakan for that, that that particular reason. Like there's just a lot of playmaking potential with Rakan. Again, uh, not 
super sure what my cannon's doing, but I'm playing, like, defense for him. So with Rakan, like, what you want to do, like, if you use one shield to, like, one shield to protect your ally, you then use your knock-up, and then you have the other shield to get back out. You use that first shield to get into the fight. You use your knock-up to kind of do whatever you want to do, like disengage or find the engage. And then you use your next shield to reposition. That's what I'm doing. And especially as AP Rakan, that's really, really important because AP Rakan can get a little um, squishy. So if you get caught out by the Galio Taunt or you get knocked out by the Wukong, you can go down very easily. The it's also part of the reason why Rakan is bad into tanks in general. Because if you go in, you get silenced and you can't really, you know, you're not really setting your team up for success by knocking up tanks. And so Rakan into tanks is a bit of an awkward matchup, which is why this wasn't the best game for Rakan, but I was just really sick of playing Braum. So I find an engage onto the Wukong, but it was the Wukong clone at the end of the day. I think I do enough here, though, to kind of get the charms across and we pick up that one kill. And again, just using my shield to buy some space, knock up. Uh, once Alistair is easy to knock up, and then we can go for the, the um, Infernal Drake with, with absolute ease. Now, I don't know what my Akali and my Kennen are doing here. I really just want to see them back off so we can go for the Drake. Infernal Drake is so important, and so you've got to really just kind of like shepherd your team into an Infernal Drake uh, um, taking spot. Now, I, I do go for a relatively aggressive play uh, onto the um, onto the, the Galio, but I'm mostly doing that to buy time. And luckily, at the end of it... Um, we, uh, we kind of get the support of the cannon and we get two kills. So came out the top of it. I was just buying time for my team to go for the Inferno. I didn't really want anybody to go down easily. And so I was like, okay, that's fair enough. Now I'm sticking around here. This is one of the great things about AP Rakan. If you look at how much I'm healing just by with my using my first ability, I am healing a, a, a decent amount here. I'm just going to obviously get a bit of help from the Raptors. The Raptors helped me out with my second kill in the game. And uh, yeah, we get a huge amount. I get a huge amount of gold. I can probably finish almost all of my... Um, oh, God. Okay, so the Wukong is just a little bit overextended. Don't think we can get the kill off this, but we forced the Flash, which, to be honest with you, getting Wukong's Flash is a really big summoner spell because the Flash Wukong ults can be really impactful in team fights. But we're about 8k gold ahead now, so like we're, we're pretty far ahead. I've got most of the items that pick up towards my Zeke's Convergence, which is a nice item with Rakan because it really synergizes well with your ultimate. And uh, now we have a couple of ob objectives to think about. I, I don't know what I, I do this running commentary of the game. Do you guys like the running commentary of the game? I just like do this running commentary of the game rather maybe than just focusing on. I have like this constant stream of thoughts. I just can't stop when I'm looking at Wild Rift games. It's kind of like why I'm a commentator, right? I commentate because I'm just having this running th stream of thoughts. Because I'm always thinking about like, oh, it's best I explain my decision making. So like my decision, decision making here is like, well, they're not going to kill me. I've got all of my abilities. I've got Rod of Ages. I'm actually quite tanky, so I can go for the, the clear on this ward. So I was pretty confident that even though Alistair was coming towards me, I wasn't in any danger. Um, it's a little difficult to go for Baron, though. I've kind of talked about this a lot, but like going for Baron when you don't have a strict man advantage, especially versus like a heavy CC team like this is always a bit in. However, oh my God, that charm. I stopped the Galio Grand Entrance and we got a huge Kellen ult off the back of it. Now, it wasn't as... It wasn't as uh, instantly gratifying as it may seem. We didn't, because there's so many tanks in this team, we didn't exactly like um, pop off. But we eventually managed to claim the fight with only one loss, which was uh, Chief, who died on the Fizz. However, I had to back because if you look at the Zaya, she's gone into full Zaya split push mode. And I kind of want to show you how much gold Zaya's picked up. She has 10,000 gold right now. Um, and I'm not bothered about hitting Zaya. I'm trying to clear the minion wave because losing inhibitor in this circumstance would have been disastrous like that's a really big objective to lose and so i didn't want to lose it but zaya's got 10,500 gold despite being one and six and that's because she has spent so much time split pushing as an ad carry and you kind of see why towers are like ridiculously good especially for getting gold onto your carries they recently changed it so it gets more gold for the person that's killing the tower and so zaya just got a bunch of gold like she's got Almost the same gold as our Akali, over the over gold of our Akali, over the gold of our, our Kennen almost. Obviously a little bit away from the Draven because he's really fed, but honestly, she could definitely put herself into herself into a carry position just by the amount of gold that she's funneled onto herself this game. Like ten thousand, it's it's pretty close to keeping even with the rest of our team, which is a good you know good look if you're an Eddie carry. So two objectives that are coming up next. Obviously we have the Baron. We obviously also have the dragon so for me as a support what i'm trying to do is just create uh opportunities for picks around the, the baron create opportunities for picks around the dragon i decided to go in on this uh it's alistair's worst case scenario 
uh, by going in on the Alistair. The worst case scenario is that we burn his ultimate, which we did. And then Draven, once the ultimate drops off, is able to pick up the kill. So the reason I went on to the Alistair there is I knew I had the support. And as I said, the worst case scenario for me was going to be, um, you know, uh, Alistair using his ultimate, which is great. Because uh, that's, that's a really big teamfight objective. I mostly used this uh, quickening to kind of like protect my team it was almost like a peeling quickening i really didn't want my team to get engaged on too hard there we're very close to taking this inhibitor tower though so a couple more basic attacks on draven would probably do the trick and i decided to heal him just to give him the, uh, the little speed boost that he maybe needs luckily uh he's super fed at this point so like draven can absolutely 1v9 and also the heals that come out from my first ability even with just rod of ages are kind of nutty like you can look at my my items i've got rod of ages plus two amplifying tones but i'm getting really big heals from my, um, my 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 first ability, which is like actually pretty impactful this game. And that's why I like Rod of Ages Rakan. You don't really get that kind of healing if you go for a traditional tank Rakan. Whereas if you go for Rod of Ages Rakan with Font of Life, you actually have a good balance between tankiness and AP, which is actually why I like that item so much on, on Rakan in support. Um, but we're having a good game. Obviously, just like one more ma major neutral objective fight and like we're in a position to win. So like around the, the dragon or around the baron, those are two like game winning objectives that we can focus Alan down over the next few minutes. But unfortunately, Shut Kenan dies. Down. Kenan died, overextended, that, which opens the opportunity for the enemy team to go for the dragon. Luckily, my Fizz is like pretty fed as well. So he's able to pick up the kill on the enemy jungler. And then there is a big overextension from the Zaya here. Now, obviously... Gotta be a little careful, which is why I'm kind of respecting the Jax. I'm respecting the um, I'm respecting the uh, Galio. But we got a good quickening into a very, very, very good Draven ultimate, like here. And as you can see, despite the fight not looking too fantastic, Draven just kind of popped off. So we got a good quickening. Draven capitalized on it. That fight went pretty badly wrong because Draven wasn't there at the start. But Draven towards the end came through big. And honestly, I'm loving this build on Rakan. I think it's super impactful. Like you get the blend of the tankiness with Rod of Ages and the resistances from the Zeke's Convergence. It works really well with his ultimate. And as you can see, uh, I think Rakan's a really good roaming, uh, like impact support. You can have big impact in games. And we ended up getting the whim. Boom! Cool. More Wild Drift Doctor coming this week, by the way. Got two episodes, I think. So, uh, yeah, we'll get on that. And uh, I'm away for my fifth anniversary, which is why you might see a lot of uh, videos of me wearing this shirt because I pre-recorded a load of them on the Wednesday. But I'll see you soon.